Okay, well, one of the problems that we have with tenancy agreements is they are inherently misleading. And um, there's a, a number of reasons why they're misleading. Um, one of these is that many laws apply whether they're written in the tenancy agreement or not. And, and one classic example of this is the statutory repairing covenants that's set out in section 11 of the 1985 Landlord and Tenant Act, which Simon's going to be taking you through later on this morning. Now, there wouldn't be a lot of point in having these regulations if landlords could exclude them by having a clause in their tenancy agreement, and, and they are intended to apply to all um, short tenancies under seven years. So if there is a tenancy agreement and they don't mention the repairing covenants, that is inherently confusing because the tenant isn't aware that they have these rights. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, good practice with drafting is, is to have a, uh, at least a mention of the regulations that apply to tenancy agreements so when people are reading them they know that they're there um, from the consumer guide um, aspect. So the statutory repairing covenants are, are one. If, if, you, if you even impliedly exclude them in any of your clauses, that, that, will, be, um, that will be invalid. And then, of course, there's the, the gas regulations and the tenancy deposit regulations. These only apply to a short shorthold tenancies, um, but, but they will apply, as we all know, to all assured shorthold tenancies, whether it's written in the tenancy agreement or not. So uh, you need to have those there. Then there is the uh, classic, confusingly titled Covenant for Quiet Enjoyment, um, which is uh, they don't have to be quiet and it's not necessary for them to enjoy themselves. So it's uh, sort of misleadingly named in a way. This, this is a very important right that all tenants have. It's the right to enjoy the property in the old-fashioned sense, which means to live there without interference from the landlord. And it's, it's sort of one of the rights of being the owner of the property for the slice of time that, that you are a tenant. So this is implied into all tenancy agreements, whether it's written down or not. And then we've got these confusing common law rules, these rules that have been built up over, over hundreds of years about how we do certain things. And, and these apply whether they're written in the tenancy agreement or not. For example, regarding service of notices to quit. Now, in assured and assured shorthold tenancies, the landlord can't serve a notice to quit because this is specifically excluded by Section 5 of the Housing Act 1988. But tenants can serve a notice to quit, uh, and the notice to quit is the document that you serve during a periodic tenancy, which ends the tenancy. And there are common law rules about its service and, and the length of the notice period, which is basically for one period of time. If you've got a monthly periodic tenancy, they need to give at least one month and it needs to end at the end of the period. And I've had tenants come to me sometimes and say, well, how do I know this? It's not written in the tenancy agreement anywhere. I need to know, you know, what my notice period is. Um, and again, it's probably good practice to say in the tenancy agreement somewhere what the notice period is, but it needs to um, comply with the common law rules, otherwise that clause will be invalid because it'll be taking away the right a tenant has. You see how confusing it all is. Um, so those are some legal things which will apply whether, the, whether the, they're written in the tenancy agreement or not. You also may have a number of clauses in the tenancy agreement which are actually unenforceable. Um, I've already mentioned any agreement to exclude the repairing covenants or, or clauses which, which take away tenants' rights under the statutory repairing covenants. Actually, there is a way to exclude the repairing covenants. You can get an order from the court, get a county court order. I've never heard of anybody doing that, but unless you, you've done that, um, they, they will apply. Um, and then there's unfair clauses will be um, invalid. I'm going to talk about those in a minute. And then there will be some clauses which are in there but may not be applicable to the type of tenancy that you have. And one of the confusing things about tenancies is that a tenancy type can change during the tenancy. And we had a classic example of that in 2010 because the, high, the, the, the um, rent limit, the high rent limit for short shorthold tenancies changed in December 2010 from £25,000 
to £100,000. So before a certain day, I can't remember what date it was in December, um, a tenancy perhaps with a, with a rent of £35,000 per annum would have been an unregulated tenancy agreement. After that date, it would have switched because the law changed. It would have become an assured shorthold tenancy agreement. They would normally have had the same tenancy throughout. So some clauses that might have been in there um, before that date, which were perhaps relevant to an unregulated tenancy, clauses relating to forfeiture and service of notices to quit, after that date, um, the relevant clauses would have been relating to section 21. Now, we do often leave um, clauses relating to unregulated tenancies in assured shorthold tenancies because there are times when, when a tenancy may change its type. Um, so it's appropriate to have them both. But that is, uh, that is confusing as well. Um, and then there's quite a few words in tenancy agreements which we lawyers like to use, but which are confusing for the ordinary people, like joint and several liability. Uh, and the word re-entry, uh, the classic forfeiture clause, um, says that if the tenant is in arrears for 21 days, the landlord may re-enter. Now, several hundred years ago, the landlord did actually have the right to physically go in, but that was taken away under the Protection from Eviction Act, certainly. Uh, so now a landlord will re-enter by bringing proceedings for possession. You can't actually physically re-enter. So the word re-enter has a different meaning, which, uh, which, is, which is a bit confusing. So in your forfeiture clauses, you always need to say that it doesn't take away the, landlord's, the tenant's rights under the Protection from Eviction Act and that, uh, that the, the tenant's rights uh, remain. 